Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with some possible reading plans for the Short Stack Readathon. Um, this readathon is something that I am hosting along with my wonderful friend Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly. I will link our info and announcements down below, and it's going for the entire month of January, so there's still plenty of time to join in, and it's all about reading short things, you know, um, especially kind of starting off your year with, like, feeling good about your reading, you know? Not that you need to read a certain number of things in order to have a good reading year, but um, I know that it always kind of encourages me if I finish a few short things very close to the beginning of the year, um, and that's one of the goals with this readathon. I'll put up the prompt graphic. Um, I did talk about this in the announcement as well, uh, but it's basically a point system, and you can really easily customize this readathon to focus on what you want. So if you only want to read like graphic novels and essays, you can keep doing that and you'll continue to get points throughout the month. Um, it's not competitive or anything, it's just a fun way to kind of track your reading and see how you're doing. Um, so the prompts are completely optional, and I kind of just picked like various different things uh, that I would maybe like to make some progress on. Um, I have like so many choices because <laughs> um, we know that's like just part of my thing is I I pick way too many books <laughs> for TBRs and things like that. Um, and I'm actually not doing my Jane Austen TBR game this month because I already had a lot of things I want to read. So I guess we'll just <laughs> get into it. Um, again, I will link the info down below if you have any questions about it, but it's a pretty straightforward readathon. Um, let us know if you're joining in and what you're going to be reading. So I'm starting off uh, with kind of a stack of like bind ups. And the first one is The Complete Father Brown Stories by G.K. Chesterton. Um, this is really thick, but the stories themselves are really, really short. And I would like to maybe focus on getting through the first, um, like, collection in this, which is The Innocence of Father Brown. Um, I have read G.K. Chesterton's nonfiction, which I have really enjoyed, but I haven't read any of his fiction. Um, so I definitely want to read some of these. And the reason that I picked a category that is, like, basically bind-ups is because I really don't prioritize those because once I've... It, it's like related to wanting to work on my physical TBR, you know? It's like if I finish part of it, then I kind of feel like, okay, well, if I read that book again, I'm not getting like credit for it, you know? Which is a silly way to think of it, but I do want to get some progress on that. Um, then I also want to read Winona's Pony Cart by Maud Hart Lovelace. Um, this is only... This is, I guess, like a novella, and I think it's a lot shorter than the first one I read, which I read in December, um, which was Carney's House Party. This is set in Deep Valley. Then I also picked a bind up of five novellas. This is Five Magic Spindles, a collection of Sleeping Beauty stories, which I think was edited again by Anne Elizabeth Stengel, um, who also did Five Glass Slippers, which was the Cinderella anthology that I was really pleasantly surprised by. Um, like, I really, really enjoyed four of the five stories. There was only one that I didn't like, and there were a couple that I really loved. So um, I'm excited to continue reading these. I picked up the Sleeping Beauty one, and yeah, this has like several authors. I just think this will be a really fun thing to kind of work my way through throughout the month. Um, then, <laughs> one that is a really great example of my tendency to not prioritize books and anthologies or collections, bind-ups, whatever, uh, The Dark is Rising sequence by Susan Cooper. I would really love to finish this series next year, possibly even in December, or January, I mean. Um, I only have two of the short novels left, but I at least want to read The Grey King, which is the next one, and then there's only one after that. So that is also a priority. Then I have, I think this is the last in this category, I have The Collected Fantasy of George MacDonald, which is obviously by George MacDonald. Um, you can see I have a bookmark in it because I am currently reading Fantasties, um, or Fantasties, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. You can see I'm tabbing it. Um, the writing is beautiful and I'm really enjoying kind of like taking my time with that. But I would like to finish that one if I haven't already finished it by the end of the year, and then also read some of the other fairy tales in this collection. Um, like some of the short ones especially, like, let's see, At the Back of the North Wind, The Golden Key, The Giant's Heart, um, yeah, any of those I think would be really just, I would enjoy making progress on it. I'm really, really enjoying what I've read from George MacDonald so far. Okay, so my next category is kind of like miscellaneous format type things. So this is like plays, poetry, nonfiction, a graphic novel, and a short story collection. Um, yeah, like I said, miscellaneous category. I would still like to get to Phoenix Fled by Atiyah Hossein. Um, this is a collection of short stories, and it's really, really short. I should have mentioned that our general guideline for short works is like around 250 pages, but we're not policing it. You'll see I have a few that don't really count for that. Um, and also, if you're reading something that's like a graphic novel, maybe it's like 300 pages, but it's still short, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the novel that I read from Atiyah Hossein, which we read for Past It Classics, and I've been meaning to get to this collection. There's no good reason why I haven't. 
Then for a graphic novel, I have Numb to This, a memoir of a mass shooting by Kendra Neely. Um, this is exactly what it says in the title. I talked about this in anticipated releases for the end of the year and I think this is going to be very difficult but I think it is really really important and I want to read this pretty soon. Then I have a poetry collection, Postcolonial Banter by Suhaima Manzoor Khan. This has come highly recommended to me by my friend Hana from Ball Gowns and Books. Um, this is one of her favorite writers and poets and I just think I'm going to really love it as well. Um, yeah, this is a pretty short poetry collection. It's like under 150 pages and I'm really excited to finally get to it. I also have a play that is The Last Wife by Kate Hennig. Um, you can see all of these tabs already in it and that is because this is the book swap that me and my friend Julia did. Um, Julia from Shakespeare and such. I annotated and sent her Blood Water Paint by Joy McCullough um, and she did The Last Wife and I was planning to read this in December but it didn't end up happening so I definitely am going to, like this, is, this one is for sure happening in January so um, I can't wait to get to that. I also haven't really been talking about like what prompts things count for but I think a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. Like there's one that's like, um, you know, a novella, short novel, poetry, nonfiction, all of that. I will try to remember though if something is specific for a prompt then I'll try to mention that. Um, I also, this is like a few nonfiction books I have. I have Books Promiscuously Read, Reading as a Way of Life by Heather Cass White. Um, I actually just got this as a Christmas present from my, uh, from my mom and this like had, hadn't exactly been on my radar. Like I think I remember Cousin from Always Doing talking about it and the premise and the title is just super interesting but I hadn't like picked it up or anything so this was a really fun surprise. It is nonfiction about like the pleasure of reading. It says it advocates for a life of constant, disorderly, time-consuming reading and encourages readers to trust in the value of the exhilaration and fascination such reading entails. So basically it's like super anti like condescending reading I think um which I just love the sound of and this is very short nonfiction. Definitely want to get to that. Um also in the very very short nonfiction category I have Finding God in the Universe by Guy Consul Magno. Um this is apparently part of a My Theology series and this is really really short. Um Guy Consul Magno is a figure like I just find him very interesting. He is one of the scientists at the Vatican Observatory and um I really like reading about the intersection of religion and science and how those things don't have to be mutually exclusive and um I've picked up a few of his books but I don't think I've actually read one yet so this maybe is a good one to start with. Then I am really not sure if I'm gonna want to throw this book into the mix um because this seems like the kind of thing that you wouldn't want to rush obviously it's like a day-by-day -day thing um and that is The Secret Garden Devotional, a chapter-by-chapter -chapter companion to the beloved classic by Rachel Dodge. Um this is a really beautiful little book and I love The Secret Garden <laughs> and I am very intrigued by the idea of a devotional that is connected by that. I'm also a little wary because I'm pretty particular like, I think a lot of people who read religious nonfiction are very particular about it, and I am as well. So, I don't know. Like, I'm hoping this isn't going to be, like, a certain kind of, like, very surface level theology that I personally don't enjoy and don't really resonate with. Um, but we will see. I thought this was worth giving a try. I don't know that I'm going to want to read that in January, but we'll see. Um, and then the last nonfiction I have is How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy by Jenny O'Dell. Um, this is a nonfiction about like uh, kind of like laziness and work and um, yeah, like this is one of several nonfiction books on this topic that I do really want to get to and it's just over 200 pages so this will be perfect for this readathon. I'm like editing my stack as I sit here so I'm like I don't know that I'll be in the mood for those so. Um, okay, next I have my short novel stack. Um, some of these, actually a lot of these are series continuations. I said a lot. There's only two actually. <laughs> oh well. Um, I have The Case of the Left-Handed Lady by Nancy Springer. This is the second book in the Enola Holmes series. Um, I really enjoyed the first book and I have read it twice <laughs> and never continued the series so I really want to do that. Um, excited to see where this goes. I also have another mystery, The Pirates of Pompeii by Caroline Lawrence. This is the third book in the Roman Mysteries series which um, I have been really enjoying. I never like read these as a kid, I just like I didn't even know about them, um, but I know they were like very formative for a lot of historical fiction readers so I definitely want to continue that. Then I remember what prompt this is for. This is for the treat yourself prompt. Um, this is Illuminations by T. Kingfisher and T. Kingfisher is one of my favorite authors. This is a short novel. This one, see, this is one of the ones that's like 
it's over 250 pages but it is still pretty short and I didn't even know she had this book coming out. This kind of gives me Italian based fantasy vibes partly because of the character names but also like the kind of guild and artwork associations. Um, I'm really excited for this. This involves like painting magic and um, I can't wait to read that. Then I have The Dragon with the Chocolate Heart by Stephanie Burgess. Speaking of Hannah, um, I know that she really enjoyed the first couple books in this series and this is even shorter than I thought it was at first. It's like, yeah, it's like around 250 pages and this is about a dragon who gets turned into a girl, um, which I just think is like a really fun twist. I feel like we don't see that a, like a ton in fantasy and I just want to finally get to this. Um, I've read one other middle grade series by Stephanie Burgess that should have really worked for me but I just felt very neutral about it so I and I, I picked up a few other books by her um like over the last few years so I definitely think I can enjoy her and will enjoy her I just need to kind of find the books that really work for me um and this one I think I do I think I have a pretty good chance of enjoying and I think that could count for the previous TBR prompt because I'm pretty sure <laughs> pretty sure I've talked about that in a TBR before I know that like years ago I mentioned wanting to read it and then obviously I, I never did. Um, then I have Beyond the Filigree Wall by Melissa Wright. This is an indie fantasy which I realize it could have been in another category coming up but I am really excited for this. This is a kind of like hate to love romance. It does involve Faye and I believe it's like two characters who are like competing against each other for a certain position but then they have to team up to fight somebody else which is a trope that I often really enjoy. Um, also one of the, so the romance is also described as slow burn which I love especially for like a pretty short book. It's like you can still do slow burn uh, but you have to be really good at it. One of the comp titles is Little Thieves one of my favorite books so I can't wait. Also Regency Fantasy, super interesting. I didn't realize that. Anyway, I can't wait. I think I'm gonna love it. I hope I'm gonna love it. Um, I also threw in a random contemporary because like I think I mentioned this, I don't know what video I mentioned this in. Maybe it was one I didn't end up posting um, but I like I do enjoy contemporary but I'm realizing that I don't read them as quickly as I acquire them as opposed to something like fantasy or historical fiction where I like read that pretty frequently. Um, so I want to start mixing in more contemporary. I want to be more intentional about mixing in contemporary. Um, so I have Kind of Sort of Fine by Spencer Hall. So our female lead is Haley Mills and she is an overachiever but who had a very public breakdown last year and everybody now knows her for that instead and she doesn't want that to be true. Um, and then our male lead is Lewis Holbrook and he says says this is going to be his year. He's ready to upgrade from the role of self-described fat funny sidekick to leading man of his own life including getting the girl. Um, so they're teamed up to work on a project together like in a class. I don't know if they might also be like if they might also be trying to like help the other person win somebody else's affections um, but then they end up getting feelings. We know that's one of my favorite tropes. Um, I also like that there is plus size wrap for the male lead. Also speaking of favorite tropes, I really love when characters are like assigned to work on the same kind of project. I just think that creates a really interesting dynamic and this is like I said, um, like obviously because it's in this TBR, it is a pretty short one so it wouldn't be hard to get to these. Like <laughs> I know I have a lot of options but like I could get through quite a few of these if I just put my mind to it. Um, I also have Shabbat Sabotage by Emma Carlson Byrne. Um, this is a mystery novel, middle grade mystery, and it's set at Jewish camp. And this is one I mentioned in a reading vlog I did but I didn't end up get getting to it obviously and I do still really want to. So that is the short novel section and then I also have a like indie fantasy category um, which those would also qualify as like novellas or short novels but I put them all together and once again I might read these, I might read other things, I might read a combination. These are just ideas. <laughs> Um, I have A Royal Masquerade by Alison Tebow. This is the continuation to The Reluctant Godfather which I read in that same reading vlog and really enjoyed um, and this is a really interesting take on The Goose Girl which is a fairy tale that I think I feel like it's becoming more common to do like unusual twists on that fairy tale which I really like. So Burndy is still one of our main characters but then we're also following Prince Colin and I think Burndy gets really upset and like enchants Prince Colin and that causes a lot of problems. Um, so that'll be fun. I also picked up The Bells of Paradise by Susanna Roundtree. Um, she's an author I've been really enjoying and I do want to get to some of these like little novellas that she's done. I think this is the one that is like a take on like the fair folk story. I think it is a retelling of a specific, a specific story or fairy tale but I can't remember what it is. Um, so yeah this will be very easy to fit in as well, very short. 
Then I have an Unnatural Beanstalk um, by Brittany Fichter. This is in the Entwined Tales series, which is a series of fantasy retellings or fairy tale retellings that are not at all connected. They're by different authors, but they do follow different siblings in the family, but like the stories don't overlap at all. Um, and this is a Jack and the Beanstalk retelling. And that's all I really know about it, but I do definitely want to continue this series because um, I like, I think I own all of the novellas now, but I just haven't continued yet. Um, and then I would like to finish a series. This is The First Chill of Autumn by W.R. Gingell. This is the third and final novella in the Shards of a Broken Sword series, um, which are, I think, very loosely connected, but you can pretty much read them separately. Um, and we're following, I think she's like a princess? Yeah, the crown princess, who's like realizing that her country is actually occupied by the Fae, and nobody else seems to get this or like acknowledge it or anything. Um, so I think it's going to be really really interesting. I also threw in a novella by Kate Stradling, who's one of my favorite indie fantasy authors. This is Maiden Minstrel, which is a retelling of the King Thrushbeard story. I also have to share this dedication with you guys. Like, <laughs> I love this. It's for all the stupid couples. Seriously, just talk to each other. I love that. Like, I'm already having a good time, and I haven't even started the book yet. And then finally, the last book I have here is another one that is... Actually, this is pretty close to 300 pages. So this wouldn't really count <laughs> for this readathon, but I do really want to read it soon. Basically, I'm putting it on this TBR because I think that'll motivate me to get to to get to it faster. We'll see. Um, and this is an author I have enjoyed before. This is The House Guest, A Pride and Prejudice Vagary by Elizabeth Adams. Um, so this is a Pride and Prejudice like retelling or like reimagining. Um, and basically this is looking at what would happen if Elizabeth Bennet became really good friends with Georgiana Darcy at near the beginning of the novel. Um, like if she, basically if Georgiana was visiting Netherfield and so they, the two of them became friends. And then when Miss Darcy is returning to town, um, Elizabeth goes with her. And so she meets Darcy earlier and in like a different circumstance, um, which I just think sounds super interesting. I love the idea of like this focusing so much on that female friendship. So um, I would like to get to this one. The print is like pretty tiny, so this is maybe a longer book than it looks like, but I have really enjoyed the other things I've read from Elizabeth Adams, and um, I want to like more actively follow her work and read more. <sighs> okay, <laughs> that is the truly ridiculous number of things I have on my list of possibilities, but like I always say, it's like these are not things that I'm absolutely having to get to. Um, I want to be pretty low stress about it. And I just thought it'd be fun to talk about like some of the ideas I had, some of the kinds of books I'm thinking of reading. Um, you obviously saw from those categories that there's a lot of like indie authors, um, some series continuations or finales, uh, nonfiction, etc. So I hope that gave you kind of an idea. I'm also still hosting several read-alongs. Um, so I will put that info in the description box about what book we're on for that. Um, I just didn't talk about them here because they didn't really qualify, but please comment and let me know if you guys are participating in the short stack readathon. Um, like we said, it, it can be very, very casual and it's really easy to only read the kinds of things that you really want to read. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!